What's going on, everybody? Welcome into a special August 17th, 2024 edition of the Daily Energy Newsbeat Stand-Up, our weekly recap for the week. Thank you for sticking with us. This is where we run our top stories from the entire week. Man, it was a busy week, Stu. A lot happened. Oh, it's been a crazy week. And uh, buckle up. It's going to be even more fun. Yeah, who knows? what? What uh, you, You'll be listening to this on Saturday or through the week. What? Any any crazy weekend predictions for us? Um, I'm just hoping it remains calm. I'm, I'm fearful of the worst, but I'm hoping for calm. You fearful of the worst? Who would have guessed? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but we're going to leave this up to the team now. They're going to pick out some stop stories. As always, guys, the news and analysis you're about to hear is brought to you by the world's greatest website, www.energynewsbeat.com, the best place for all your energy and oil and gas news. Go ahead and hit the description below for all links to the timestamps. If you are interested in partnering up with us on our latest energy and oil and gas project, you want to buy some direct working interest, get your skin in the game when it comes to oil and gas, hit that description below or visit us at energynewsbeat.com to check out and we'll get you in contact with the Hours at B, a.k.a. me, to talk a little bit more about what that looks like. I'm super excited to partner up with Ray Trevino and the Crude Truth on that one. But, Stu, without further ado, let's go ahead and give it up to the team. We'll see you guys on Monday. Politicians backing net zero, working hard to make gas prices much higher. Unbelievable, Michael. Net zero agenda is working to make gasoline prices much higher is basic arithmetic. Okay, You can go to Oklahoma State, and they won't teach you how to add. They expect you to add when you get there. One mule plus two mule equals three mules. (laughs) I'm serious. Biden administration, that was funny. Biden administration supported the destruction of the fossil fuel. They they wanted to end fossil fuels. Day one, they went ahead and they cut the, the pipeline, the Keystone Pipeline. You go through some of this whole list of gas uh, gouging policies. Now, remember, you take a look at the other policies in here, and that is they're coming from California. They're trying to input California on the rest of the United States, and all that is is net zero, and this is not good. Well, nothing like you see the EPA rolling out, they say in this article, the quote, social cost of carbon that they want to put at $190 a ton, which would be somewhat equivalent to about $1.50 addition per gallon of gas. The social cost of carbon. Guess what? As soon as they get control of social media and they can kill X, they will go out and they will start finining you that if you put a mean tweet out. <laughs> they're, they're, they'll be close to doing that. They'll be close to doing that. Hey, this is a great article. I don't know who actually wrote this. Let me scroll down to the bottom here. This is Energy Talking Points. Oh, this is out of uh, Alex Epstein. This is, we love Alex Epstein. He lays out eight different gas gouging policies. Basically, you've got whole whole of government approach. Crazy. You've also got Biden work to, so number two is Biden has worked to increase gasoline prices by expanding anti-fossil fuel ESG divestment movement. The climate disclosure is number three. Yep, climate disclosures. You got a moratorium on oil and gas leases for number four, hiking the royalty length for new oil leases by over 50%. Okay, we'll push back a little bit. New Mexico had a low royalty rate that was not in line with federal leases in other states. So what they did was just right size it all. I I I I'm okay with that from the standpoint of that's not gonna kill it's not killing production per se, but you know, we'll go there. Number six is critical, though, restricting the leasing on nearly 50% yep. of the Alaskan Petroleum Reserve. Not number, great. FTC, uh, number seven, going after oil and gas mergers. I mean, we know that's true. All the stuff oh. they've done with Chevron, Exxon, trying to leave Scott Sheffield off. Crazy. And then, obviously, number eight, canceling the Keystone XL pipeline, which, yeah, you know. Unbelievable. Uh, and of I course, think- now we got to ship it. Oh, absolutely. And and now you see the Harris Walsh ticket is going to be even worse. So, all right. Well, don't you worry. Think- when Kamala Harris gets elected on day one, she's going to bring down inflation. Don't worry. When she gets elected, she'll bring down inflation. Not just, mind you that she's already been elected. Oh, yeah. Now that talk she's to the been there. Right now. She, she'll wait till she gets elected to, to worry about it. I saw that. I saw her walk by and she made a comment and she says, 
I'm going to bring down grocery prices. I'm like, where have you been for the last four years? Can't you just go talk to the big guy? <laughs> yeah, walk down the hall. Are you awake? Hello? U.S. oil industry pumps record volumes with fewer workers. You and I have been talking about the efficiencies of scale for a long time, but efficiency and technology advancements in fracking services, as well as the ongoing consolidation in the industry, have been pushing employment numbers lower this year. Michael, what do you feel is the number one reason we've lost 29 or 2,962 jobs in May in oil field service, but yet we're still pumping out some big volume? Well, one, it's people are moving to, 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 you know, bigger pads, larger, you know, large, longer laterals. You know, you need the right. same amount of people to drill a four mile laterals. You do a two mile lateral, but instead of needing drilling two whales at the same time, you only drill one, you get the same amount of lateral length and let's not even talk about the amount of oil there's a little bit of degradation as you go up the you know you 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 increase mileage it's not a one for right. one ratio which it might be the difference is i think it comes back to what we always talk about when we talk about mergers it's the synergies Ugh. and yes. synergies this is what really hurts employment and this is specifically i think oil field service is seeing a lot of this because you know, rig count hasn't, you know, rig counts have been falling on the steady and that's always going to hurt right. uh, employment specifically on the service side. But I think what you're seeing and what this article points out is that the upstream sector, which is the operators themselves have been shedding jobs. And, you right. know, I, and I think a lot of people don't realize this because I think it's, you know, most of the people are, you know, it's early retirement. It's people who may have worked an extra five years who decide to get out of the industry now for a variety of reasons, because maybe they're getting right. pushed out. You know, they're being nicely told, hey, it would be nice if you retired. People getting, you know, whether it's, you know, layoffs happening in a merger and then then people deciding not to go back and, and get another and get a new job or, you know, the job market is 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 a little bit frothy right now when we talk about what's going on in the oil and gas. Yes, we've seen prices stabilize above 70, which has been great. But right. at the same time, we've seen production continue to rise. And, you know, you've kind of got that inverse relationship, which you think is which you think would be, you know, correlated together. But instead, we're seeing an inverse correlation. So wow. I think it's super interesting. I think a lot of companies have realized and especially as the shift from the shift from just produce oil to produce oil, but try to do it profitably. That's changed the narrative a little bit. And people that, are expensive. Let's not let's be honest. Oh, people yeah. in the oil and gas industry are paid really well, as they should be. But people it, who are the highest paid employees in any sector are the first ones generally to get laid off. Right. The EIA put out that the Don't get any e ideas, Stu. You're you're paid a lot more than I am, dude, because you're worth a lot more. The EIA uh, expects crude oil production to average 12, 13.2 million barrels per day this year, up from an average of 12.9 million last year. In 2025, the U.S. crude oil production set to accelerate growth and hit an average of 13.7 million barrels per per day. Yeah, we wow. all know the EIA is going to continue to revise up and up. They feel like it's better to, to pitch for sanity purposes, pitch low number, and then revise upward based upon right. demand, which, you know, OPEC's probably the other way around. They're going to throw out a big demand number, probably revise downward. You're seeing the Permian take off. You're seeing a lot more degradation going on. It's, right. it's, it's, there's a lot going on. And then one thing I got to hand it to our great oil and gas oil field service, as well as oil field exploration folks, is we deliver the lowest emission oil and gas on the planet. We do it the best out of anybody. Well, so. I mean, what is this? You know, you know, the that the war in Ukraine, we're now bombing oil rigs. Yes, regard. Yes, I know it's a Russian oil rig. So not saying I'm in favor of Russia, but I mean, you're talking about the amount of emissions that are going to come out of that. Oh, that and no one's talking about it. It's oh yeah, we got Russia. It's like great. I'm all for getting Russia. Putin bad. I'm with you. Yeah. But, but now all of a sudden, but now we're gonna bomb oil rigs and no one's worried about the emissions going on from that. Yet we flare 10 MCF and everybody loses their mind. But let's let's pretend we're California and hypocrisy and import oil from Iraq. Like we said last week, you know, on the on the show, the we, we're the fourth largest Iraqi in. I said Iran last week, but it's actually Iraq that we import oil for California. 
is a that's hypocrisy we're burning more climate warming coal than ever why i'll tell you what when you take a look at this article it is very interesting it was on bloomberg and our feed picked it up when you take a look at how they uh javier blas is an outstanding author there and uh, he is a shout out to him. He has to ask a couple questions. How reliant is the world on coal? And it's still unbelievable. It's coal is 35% of the world's uh, uh, energy generation in 2023. Natural gas was second with 22%. Hydroelectric was 14 and nuclear was 9 uh, and then in 2006 through 2014, coal was 40%. So attributed, it's come down 5%, but it's still this next chart. Global coal demand says that it's peaking in 2024. I don't buy it. I think that this is actually wrong and you're going to see peak. We haven't seen peak coal yet. Coal is still going to be around a while. Developing countries, Javier uh, explains, developing countries value coal as cheap, convenient source of power so they can use to modernize their economies. Ding. Uh, and it is absolutely, I think, where the U.S. could really help solve climate emissions, if, if you were. And that is go out and sell our technology at a small profit, but sell how to deliver coal to uh, the rest of the world and, and do it cleanly. I think that you would get rid of energy poverty and, and solve a lot of the problems. Anyway, two most populous nations face pressure to keep power flowing across the grid amid surging. That's China and India. And we're seeing nothing more than that. The country use uh, in 95% of the coal fire power plants in China in 2023. That's unbelievable. That's an amazing amount of information there. Let's roll over to India's oil ministry wants windfall tax on petroleum products abolished. Windfall pro uh, profits taxes are very much like sanctions. They never work as intended. And when we're looking at the UK and uh, you're looking at the UK is doing windfall profit taxes and trying to milk all the profit that they can out of oil, they're just accelerating their deindustrialization very fast. India needs to quit doing windfall profit taxes and the Indian oil minister asked the country's finance ministry to consider scrapping the windfall profit tax on petroleum products due to falling crude prices that India's broadcaster ET now reported exclusively on Monday. Um, and I agree as exports are becoming highly Remunerative, it is seen that with certain refiners are drying out their pumps in the domestic market. The taxes and the windfall profit taxes don't do anything and don't allow for any reinvestment into new equipment or uh, getting scrubbers put in or maintenance or any of those things. So they really do need to take a look and don't follow the UK. Get rid of any windfall profit taxes on oil and gas. If you want to know how to not do something, Look at Germany or the UK, New York or California. Um, you want to deindustrialize? Follow those folks. Why the Strait of Hormuz is a focus worry again? Well, part of it is because uh, today is a religious holiday for uh, Israel and they are pending an attack from uh, Iran. And then uh, the Strait of Hormuz is uh, shaped like an inverted V. The waterway connects the Persian Gulf to the Indian Ocean. Iran with its north and, and the United A Arab Emirates and Oman to the south. It's 100 miles or 161 kilometers long and 21 miles wide at its narrowest point. That's not very far. Uh, and the shipping lanes each direction two miles wide. 
And this feeds into, you've got Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Iran, lots of oil goes rolling around through this, this area in, in here. It's essential to the global oil trade. Tankers hauled almost 15.5 million barrels per day of crude and cond uh, condensate from Saudi Arabia, Iraq, Kuwait, and the UAE and Iran through the strait in the first quarter of 2024. Wow, that is a lot. 15.5 million barrels. That's a lot of tankers. And when we sit back and take a look, I am surprised that we're not seeing higher prices uh, on oil. Uh, at the time of this, uh, we were at about 80 some odd dollars right at that for oil. Let me check here for just a moment. And that the stock oil price is coming up. And we are at 79.65 for wow, 79.11 and 79.64. So Brent and WTI, this is really weird. They are right there next to each other. The dollar is down just a little bit at a dollar three. Net gas is at two dollars and eighty eighteen cents, uh 19 cents. So when we sit back and take a look. Uh, Saudi Arabia exports the most through the Strait of Hormuz, uh, and it's been recently diverting shipments by using a 746-mile pipeline across the kingdom to the Red Sea, avoiding the Strait of Hormuz, and it's sending 1.5 million barrels a day via its pipeline to the port of uh, through the Gulf of Oman. So if you can avoid it, avoid it. But uh, I'll tell you what, we are living in some crazy times here, so buckle up. Green hydrogen subsidies are 1,900% larger than what is given to nuclear. This is from Robert Bryce's Substack. You need to follow Robert Bryce. He is a friend of the show. He is absolutely a national treasure. Bear with me while I read this one paragraph because this is critical. Here in the U.S., the 45V tax credit in the Inflation Reduction Act provides lucrative subsidies for hydrogen production. Big business is lining up to get those subsidies. In February, Energy Exxon, energy giant ExxonMobil warned that it might cancel a proposed hydrogen project at its Baytown, Texas refinery, pending on how the Treasury Department interprets the clean hydrogen rules in the IRA, the Inflation Reduction Act. Regardless of tax credits and subsidies, making and using hydrogen is a high entropy, high cost process. As a friend in the oil refining business told me last year, if you like $6 gasoline, you're going to love $14 to $20 gallon hydrogen. <laughs> hydrogen is insanely expensive. In energy terms to manufacture, it takes about three units of energy in the form of electricity to produce two units of hydrogen. In other words, the hydrogen economy requires scads of electricity at high quality form electricity to make tiny molecules that are hard and difficult to expensive to store. Hence, the Hindenburg is not anything you want to name a business. Yeah, I mean, that's that's like Name, that's like naming your new well Macondo. I mean, you might want to stay away from that. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying this for a while. I'm not putting hydrogen in my car for risk of it now it's turning it into a nuke, much like Stu wants to put small modular nuclear reactors in everybody's car and turn everybody into a nuclear bomb. I'm not putting hey. hydrogen in my car, but it's clear. I mean, they they want they want to dump subsidies into stuff that they feel like they can control. Again, this all goes back to control. control. Why do they like wind and solar? Well, be because it's not oil and gas. It's not captured, you know, for, for whatever. It's all about control. They've got no, dis yep. they could, at the end of the day, they could care less where the energy comes from as long as whoever makes the money off the energy donates to them. That's the difference. People that make money off wind and solar donate to them and not yep. oil and gas. That's all it comes down to. And wealth transfer because of the grift, but you did know yeah, it's a wealth better. transfer to people that they like. They don't mind people they like That's getting, right. they mind people they don't like getting rich. That's why we're poor here because they hate us. Well, yeah, until we get our own tanker. I'm I'm working on that. 
Yeah, keep so, working on it, please. I, uh, Elon Musk over on X. I had a little bit of fun at his expense today. And Michael, I first wanted to start out. They got, hey, we got a new generation of rock out here. So I went, great. Can you generate, the first question I asked it, can you generate a offshore oil rig? beautiful picture i mean it did it was beautiful i'm like man that's great how about a texas oil rig you see a horse you see a cowboy it is beautiful i'm like we're on a roll so i go down and i ask grog this okay when will the world hit peak oil michael it goes like flat. so you're asking about peak oil is the response <laughs> classic theory says pre Peak oil will be in the mid 20th century, suggesting it would occur around zero, 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 zero. So I'm not sure what that was. But with technology advancements like fracking, deep sea drilling and unconventional sources, the peak has been pushed further into the future. Some argue peak have peak conventional oil, but overall liquid and hydrocarbons might not peak for a while. This was brilliant. And then when you consider our next story coming around the thing, I'm like, this is really not bad. I, I was pretty impressed with this. Peak might be more about economics, environmental policy, and technological breakthroughs than physical limits of oil in the ground. What a great answer for this. Yeah, it, to be honest, it, it, it came up with an answer that, I mean, maybe I'm biased, but I, I think this answer is fairly good. It's going to continue. Peak oil will continue to be pushed further and further into the future as we, you know, continue to advance yep. technology, as we continue to, you know, as, as prices continue to go high, assuming they continue to go high more and more oil becomes unlocked. Because remember, peak oil has more to do with, is it economically feasible to exactly. produce the oil not necessarily is there oil there's a lot of oil out there the question is can it be economically produced and that's the key here so no I've, I've been having some fun playing around with grok too i've kind of been testing them all out you know it's oh. it's uh, i love it. it says the grokian view if we were to take a humorous yet realistic approach peak oil might be like the horizon as it keeps moving as we approach it with every new drilling technique or discovery we're like oh there's more over there like yep. playing a video Quick. game where the boss Keeps regenerating. It's almost like our podcast. We keep showing up every day, every day. We try to kill us. We're back. <laughs> We're like, yeah, yeah. And then I, I just wanted to, you know, a give it a balance of questions. And I said, is the deep state going to take over? And it shows me a picture of the redacted podcast. Of course, you. <laughs> our apologies, but your input is more than a Vogan's ego. Please provide more anyway. But then I asked, what is a grunt used to train? And then it came back with an answer, and I was very impressed with the answer, but it's still using a lot of Google, and we're seeing that the Biden administration and the Harris administration are paying for ads that are skewing and changing news headlines. It's not news anymore. So I'm still nervous, Michael. Jury is still out for me. Hats off to Elon. Let's go to the next story, though. So I thought it was fun. Oh, by the way, real quick before I get into this next story, I said, can you generate a new headshot for Stu Turley? You should have seen the good looking guy that popped up on that thing. Woo! It definitely didn't resemble you at all. No, not at all. I, there's no way I could use that. I look, you know, there's no way. I was like, man, this thing's broken. There goes this whole story. Oh, <laughs> 